Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome back to part two of our look at the FNIRSI 1014D <clears throat> oscilloscope. This is Finrissi's, again, first benchtop oscilloscope, which they list as 100 megahertz, one giga sample per second, two channel scope with a built-in function generator. <clears throat> now in the first part, we uh, went over a few things. And one of the things I talked about was there's no calibration thing over here but I was going to get to in this part and as uh, one of our intrepid viewers B blood from Florida also known as Florida man pointed out all you have to really do is put your tip into the generator output so I have my generator set for uh, one kilohertz and all we need to do is just go like this Whoops. So you can see we have one kilohertz and then we can adjust our probe compensation as necessary. There we go. So we're all good there. Now, the next big question, is it really a 100 megahertz scope? Well, I've got a 100 megahertz can oscillator right here. So let's hook it up. I have my doubts. Make sure we are on times 10, which we are. Now it's showing us the wave just fine, but what you're going to notice is if you look here at the frequency counter, it's showing us 15.2 kilohertz. So that's not really so good, is it? All right, let's turn off the can there. And I'm going to yank it out and we're going to replace it with something a little slower. I have got a 28.224 megahertz can here so let's uh let's pop that guy in and see what we get out of that we'll go ahead and use the auto set well that's really interesting that almost looks like amplitude modulation on there but I know there's no amplitude modulation. What the? That's interesting. And again, it's showing us 11 megahertz. Still not right. Okay. So we'll take that one out. And I have many more, don't worry. Next up, we have 10 megahertz. So we'll throw in 10 megahertz. Get my pin straight. All right, 10 megahertz coming at you. Okay, so at 10 megahertz, we get a good signal. It's not bode well. All right, um, five point oh six eight. Is that what that says? Five point oh six eight. It looks like. So we'll try that one. Five point oh six. Yep, that's right on. So, I have to say it is not 100 megahertz. Uh, let's go back to that 28 megahertz. I 
fire that back up. Hmm. Okay, there we go. So now we're on it at 28 megahertz. It's a little adjustment saw it took. I wonder, wonder why it was like that. But at least at this speed is able to count us correctly. And we're still getting, you know, 5 volts peak to peak there. So we're good at 28.8. Let's try 100 again. You guys just did something wrong. Yeah, see now it's showing us 80 some megahertz. That's interesting, okay. We'll do the auto set thing. See how it's showing us 14 point four kilohertz. Yeah, it cannot read that frequency. It's still showing us the right voltages, but it's just not quite able to read the frequency of 100 megahertz. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I took the 100 megahertz out, and I put the 5.068 back in. I'm going to go here to channel 1. Whoops. Come on. And we're going to turn the FFT on. Or at least we're going to try. Turn it on. Nope, that's not doing it. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. There we go. So, well, that's not a great FFT at all. And it doesn't look like there are any other controls for the FFT. I'm just poking around here. Yeah. So in, in my opinion, whoops, the FFT is kind of an afterthought. Not that great. Now, you notice two buttons here, H, cur H cursor and V cursor, which is nice. So we have our, uh, our measurement cursors here. So that we can get a measurement of the wave back on there. There we go. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we can get them both at the same time, which is really an incredible feature. You don't find that um, in the low price scopes until you get up into the uh, Rigel 1054Z range. So to have those both available on a low cost scope like this is just a really, really nice feature. We also have a slow roll mode. We have this horizontal button here. We can swap our trigger channels by pressing change. Then we have our trigger mode, which goes normal and single. We already talked about that. So, that's what we're looking at. All in all, I think this is a really good beginner's level bench oscilloscope i th think functionality wise it's on par with their tablet scope which i think is an excellent scope as well um i think they've probably taken the firmware from that and ported it into this and then just given us some physical buttons so what do you say we shut this off 
discombobulate all our connections and look it up, open it up and see what's going on inside. As I'm looking at from the back here, it looks like we have three screws across the top and four on the bottom. So I'm going to remove them and we'll see what's up. All right, I have been fighting with this for a few minutes now trying to get these screws out. I mean, they are way sunk down in there. Look at this. That's a good two inches down in there. And my favorite little screwdriver does not reach. This one does not reach. There's my red one. This one kind of reaches but it's not really pointy enough. I can't really tell if I'm getting it. <laughs> so I'll keep working on this. Okay. That is the most effort I have ever had to put into taking one of these things apart. And I actually cracked the screw trying to get that one out, which I can't get no matter what. And this is as far as I'm going to go with this because there's really nothing much on the other side there. What we have here is some sort of ASIC. This looks like a JTAG header. But look here. What's this? And get the doggone thing out of there. It's got an SD card. It doesn't want to come out. Oh, there we go. Look at that. It's an 8 gigabyte. SD card which I am assuming is for the memory where it's storing the pictures and waves and stuff like that but yeah there's not much to see here a little sloppy resoldering work there it's kind of odd And some resoldering done there as well. But yeah, I mean, this is we're going to find the brains of it here. Here's our channel one, channel two, our generator output. Hmm. Yeah, there ain't much inside here. So, guys, there you have it. The Finris E uh, 1014D. Not quite a hundred megahertz. I mean, it's it's close, but not quite. But for the price, you're getting a lot of stuff that you don't see in the low end starter scopes, including the signal generator, the built-in storage, horizontal and vertical cursors working at the same time. Again, not a hundred megahertz. You know, it's kind of lacking there. The menu system is kind of lacking, but again, I think the menu system is more from the um, this being ported over from the tablet version. So, all in all, I'm, I'm still pretty happy with it. Let's go take a look on the computer at what it's going for today, because I know after I ran the first part of this that the prices went way up. So there you have it. That's about as much as I can tell you about this thing. We'll leave it on the bench for a while. We'll play with it. We'll put it into the rotation as, you know, a scope for our projects. And we'll see how it goes. Thanks again to uh, Finrissi, Finrissi, however the heck you say that, for sending this out for our consideration. I want to thank you guys for watching. Feel free to comment, or share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. And big thanks to you for watching. Wouldn't be here if you weren't watching my videos. So, thank you. That's it. I'm out. Peace. All right, we're looking at the AliExpress site here. And uh, we'll sort these guys by price. 
How is this going for $63? Oh, okay. So that's this one. That's 175 What are we getting here for the one for 139 Yeah, there you go. No, that's the 139 That's 172 So it looks like the price has been uh, increased up to about $175. But hey, frankly, that is still a good price for what you're getting for this scope. And, uh, you know, i tell you guys what I see. Call them as I see them. Um, this scope definitely has its shortcomings. But if you're somebody looking to get into the electronics hobby, uh, keeping the money, you know, for other things that you need for necessities, then getting this for under $200 is going to end up saving you some money in the long run. Because if you get something like, say, the, uh, the hand tech for $250, you're not getting a signal generator out of it. So that's something else that you're going to have to buy. And you're, you're looking at $60 to $100 for a low-end signal generator. So if you can get them both in one package, light, and then, you know, one of the biggest uh, points to this thing is it is isolated. So you don't have to worry about hooking something up backwards to your mains and, and blowing your scope. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool.